in the previous video, we learned that when we click on a link, both data and code are loaded from the server and the page is rendered in the browser. Now it turns out Swellkit provides certain attributes that we can use to preload the data and code. Let's understand how that works with an example. In the root page, we have a link to the products page. On this link, we can add a new attribute. Data, Swellkit, preload data. We're going to set this to hover. Let's go back to the browser and understand what happens. I have the network tab open on the right hand side and on the home page, I'm going to refresh. Now, if I simply hover over the products link, you can see all the data and code requests are already sent to the server before I even click the link. When I do click the link, the page loads instantly as everything necessary to render this page was already downloaded. When we set data swell kit preload data to hover, we are basically making an educated guess that the user will click on that link and asking Swellkit to preload data and code necessary for the next route. Swellkit makes a head start on importing the code and fetching the page data, which can slightly improve performance. Now, hover means that preloading will start if the mouse comes to a rest over a link. On mobile, preloading begins on the touch start event. Sometimes though, calling the load function when the user hovers over a link might be undesirable. A user may not necessarily click the link after hover. But there is even more trouble if the data that needs to be fetched updates after it is preloaded. In such cases, you can specify the tap value. This causes Swellkit to call load only when the user taps or clicks on a link. If you head to the browser, go back to the home page, refresh, clear network panel, hover, and there is no preloading. But when you click on the link without releasing the mouse button, you can see preload is in progress. So the tap attribute value corresponds to mouse down. Now, if you have multiple links in your site, you don't have to add this preload data attribute on every link. You can add it once to the body tag. In fact, it is this very attribute which we deleted in the previous section to understand about loading data. Let's add it back. Cut. Open app.html. On the body tag, paste it. Change tab to hover. Back in the browser. Refresh. Hover. We see preloading still works. In the products page, when I hover over an individual product, preloading works again. By setting the attribute on the body tag, every link element respects the value. Of course, you can also wrap a div tag around a few different links and set the attribute on the div tag as well. It is completely dependent on your requirement. Now, what if we want 90% of the links in our website to preload, but 10% not to do that? Well, on the 10%, you can set the attribute value to off. Let's do that for our products link. In the home page, data swell could preload data set to off. Now, back in the browser, refresh, and when we hover over products link, there is no preloading of data or code. Navigate and hover over a product. Preloading still works. As you can see, the data Swellkit preload data attribute helps tweak how we preload data and code, which can improve the way users perceive our website. A few milliseconds matter a lot and we take every bit of improvement we can. All right, thank you for watching. And in the next video, let's take a look at a similar attribute.